Welcome to the Once a Cowboy, Always a Cowboy podcast, where you hear the history of Cheney football from the unique perspective of Coach Ron Burtis. Keelan, 2003 graduate, right? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Born and bred on the west side. Yes, I was. Volney yeah. Rogers. Volney, Kurt Muir. I went to Kurt Muir, then to Volney, then to Cheney. And we were talking the other day, and you said you wanted to start, and I think it'd be just a really good place, just kind of about your exposure to Cheney oh, yeah. football. And yeah. 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 No, I, I remember I remember I was little when well, my brother went to Cheney, and so – I of course. don't think you were ever little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, you're right. I didn't make the weight for Little League. But I remember when I was little, my brother went to Cheney. And then the games, we used to come on TV, all the City Series games, like uh, Rand versus Wilson and Cheney versus East. And they would come on, like I think, like Sunday morning. And so that was like my well, first. They did do that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, like yeah. my first introduction. I remember seeing Clyde Morgan, John Cook. Ron Warga, I remember those guys playing, and so that's how I was like, okay, well, who are these guys and all red, and that was my introduction into Cheney football. Really, yeah. that's how I started, and I would always root for Cheney because when my brother was going there, and so it was just natural for me to just root for him. But yeah, I used to watch those like every. I think they would come on like during the middle of the season, but then they would come on TV, and I would just sit there and watch. And that's how I got my introduction into the Cheney football brand. Now, who'd you who'd you play for at Volney? Oh, the Gesslers, man. That was with the Gesslers. And then, yeah. So then, it, so then when I went to Volney, you know, you you would have the players come. And right. I thought at the time I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. I was like, dang, we get to go see the huh. Cowboys play. And and like I I told you the other day, there was no bigger and better uh, recruiting pitch to me than. I felt like at the time we had the best player in the state of Ohio, Anthony Floyd. So I remember us going to go see – the first game I got to go see really on the sidelines was Struthers. You guys played Struthers. I think they had Walter Reyes there at the time, who was a great running back, played mm-hmm. at Syracuse. Mm-hmm. And uh, But, yeah, I remember going to that game, and I remember uh, – I think you guys were down at halftime. We were supposed to go in and hear your halftime speech, but uh, – I think Coach Bob Gessler told us, like, nah, we better not. I don't think it's going to be a <laughs> – So you opted to, for the concession stand. Yeah, no, it, you know, we just had to stay on the sideline and watch the band. Coach Gessler was like, nah, we're not going to go in there. It's not going to be a – I don't think it's going to be a PG-13 speech he's going to give these guys. So yeah. then uh, and then the next – in, well, I believe the next year you guys make the run for state. And then um, – yeah, we had a couple goal line stands uh, in that game, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I remember, I think Antoine ran it in for a touchdown on a bootleg, and yeah. yeah, it was a big, it was a big win at the time. I remember. And that then, would have been '97. Yeah, '97. Yeah, that's the year I went to state, and then, uh, and that was the year, you know, y'all made that playoff run. And I tell people all the time, man, Anthony Floyd was making catches like, like I, I was telling you, if YouTube and all that stuff was was on back then. I mean, Anthony Floyd would have been nationally known because he was making catches that, you know, people say now, see now, like, oh, man, that was a great catch. I was like, hey, Anthony Floyd was doing that in 97. (laughs) You know what I mean? So, yeah, so I remember, like, I just remember those times. I was like, man, I can't wait to get there and and do what these guys are doing and and playing and playing in playoffs and going to the state. And, you know, I remember to watch the Jesuit game. Y'all threw it to him, like, twice. The first time it didn't happen, then the second time he catches it, running it in right before halftime. Uh-huh. So I remember, like I remember all of those great plays he was making, and and then, uh, and like I said, going to see, and you know, you got, and I remember you even came down to Volney and talked to us a couple of times. You would come down there and give a little spiel, give a speech, and then you would go back up and, you know, I guess coach had go go back up to Cheney and get your coaching in. But yeah, I remember all that. That was like a. You know, I listened to the earlier podcast. You know, I, I felt like that did build a, a great foundation and for us to come up there. And hell, I remember we, we you even let us come up there and lift the eighth graders mm-hmm. coming yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We used to do, yeah, and we used to come up there and we would lift. And I remember I would go and he would do the conditioning with y'all. 
and I would come up there and I would run with you guys. And so yeah, I remember I, all that I remember, and I thought that was a, a great way, you know, to keep it going. And, and of course, the Gesslers, they was always pushing Cheney and all that. So that was also a factor into it. But but yeah, I remember that. And then I remember my freshman year, <laughs> which was a uh, learning <laughs> experience. It, it was uh, definitely a. Uh, it was definitely a, uh, one of those moments was like, do you like football or do you love football? Because that that whole year was definitely, as you say, definitely was a learning experience. I, you know, I, re- I, I was telling the coach on this the other day. I remember the, well, I remember you, um, I remember you called home to my dad and asked him, would it be all right if your son stayed for doubles? I remember that, and he, my dad was like, "Yeah, yeah, he'll be." I don't know if it was you, or or one of the coaches. I remember called the like coach. I think Coach Burns wants him to stay for doubles. And my, he's like, "Yeah, yeah." My dad was all into it. Like, "Yeah, yeah, he'll be down there." So I remember after the we, I practiced with the freshman in the morning. Then you asked me, "Are you going to stay down with us, big dog?" I was like, "Yeah, well, I'll be there." And then um, I went down there. The first practice and the first day I wasn't really you know I was learning the plays and stuff I wasn't in the starting lineup and I always felt like the guys down there probably thought it was like a like a thing to give them a push to hope <laughs> get them going and then I remember like the second day I was in there and I remember he was like okay get him get the freshman in and I was and I was starting left guard and uh I remember I remember I didn't. I didn't feel the tension then when I was first down there, but when you guys put me in that starting lineup, I could feel the tension from the other players. Uh, from because me being it, because it was it was so unusual for a freshman yeah. to be to be there. I mean, that hadn't happened since Matt Gilchrist in '90. Yeah. You know. So, and, and I also like I was going to go on. I was like a lot of these guys that this was their first years really starting. Those guys, those guys uh, that, and I, you know, and I kind of understood their, you know, tension towards me, you know, finally get to play and here's this freshman kid right, coming and, and uh, um, playing and starting. And I, I still remember that time, uh, I ain't going to say no names, but I remember the time when one of the players got hurt and y'all put in somebody else. So when he got better, you know the other guy was doing a good, uh, doing a better job. But so instead of him taking it out on him, trying to earn it, they would try to take it out on me. And so, yeah, there was a couple of little instances. Instance, and then uh, I remember uh, my dad. He always tells this story. I remember my dad was up by the fence, and a parent came and talked to him. And you know he was just going on. Ah, they got this freshman playing. And, you know, my son's upset, and, you know, the other players seem like they, they're upset. My son said he wanted to quit and all this. And then he said he finally, my dad said he finally asked him, who's your son? That freshman you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I knew there was a lot of tension uh, going. But I, 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 I think my mindset was was uh, just play and Try not to mess up. I think that was like my whole mindset the whole season. Just try to hit the right guy on every play, even if he beats me. Just make sure you try to keep up with the right guy that year. But um, yeah, that was that was a long. That was definitely a long year. That was ninety nine. Ninety nine. And so that was that was the year four and six. Yeah. You know, so it was struggle. Yeah, and it was a it was a struggle for, you know, just wins. And that was my we, first year too on on varsity. So yeah, it was, I, I think we only played nine games. No, we we played ten. Did right? we play ten? Yeah, because we the shed happened, but we pushed ran. Back. I know. Yeah, yeah we I played know. them during the yeah. playoff week. Yeah. So yeah, we played ten. We played ten. Ninety ninety eight. Y'all played seven. seven and two. Yeah, y'all played nine. That year. It was it, that was uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that was yeah. a nine game season. Yeah, um, but. Oh, go ahead. No, no. Uh, ahead. Uh, but, but I knew I was at a serious program. I was yeah. telling him this story. I knew I was at a serious program that was about winning. I remember we scrimmaged uh, 
Nordonia, Madonia, I don't, I don't forget what they was called. Nordonia, yeah. Nordonia. Nordonia. And they whooped us. They, they beat us pretty soundly in all phases. And I remember we had a, um, we watched film in the gym that, that time. And you had the bleachers pulled out. And you was the only one in, sitting in the chair. You had your chair. <laughs> and I remember you, we was going through the film. And you're here, and, and Coach Saunders, you're saying something, and Pope and Allen, and Coach Mick, and all of them trying to coach us and tell us what we do wrong. You're just sitting there all quiet. The next thing I know, you get about your chair, you throw it, you <laughs> throw it through, and the, and the locker room door was open, so you throw it through, you throw it out the gym through the locker room door, and you walk out. Now at the time, as a freshman, I ain't never seen nothing like this, you know. But you know, I, I played football in Little League for Young Disciples, which is a church school that Tim Frog, you know, yeah. uh, Gary Price Frog yeah. made. So you, it wasn't nothing, nothing like that was going on, or even at Volney, the Gesslers, they wasn't throwing chairs or nothing like that. So I was like, oh my gosh! And I remember looking around, and I'm trying to get eye talk, eye contact with one of the other players to see what's going on, but everybody head was straight in front. I mean, you could hear a pin drop in there. And you was out there for about five minutes, and then you came in the far end of the gym. You come in, you pick up the clicker. <laughs> I'll never forget. I did that. You said, I did that so I wouldn't have to grab one of you soft asses. And you sat back down. <laughs> you sat back down, and we go back through the field. And I was sitting there thinking, like, wow. What did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, and, and then that's when it, it hit me. I was like, man, A is all about serious about winning here. And so that was like my first introduction into uh, really like, hey, this is a program that that wants to win. But yeah, I remember that like yesterday, man. You picked up that chair and you threw it. Well, it seemed like a good thing to do at the time. Oh, you remember that? Because I, 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 I do remember it. I, 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 I do remember it. I do remember it. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so then, you know, going through the season, we play Fitch first. We lose that one. And then we come back. We get. I felt like we got a little better. We play Canfield. We beat Canfield. And then Boardman week. And I remember Boardman just destroying us, just – I think the score was like 26 to 7. Mm -hmm. Only reason why we got those seven points is because Marcus Patton pulled a play out of his butt and ran and hit the guy and spun off and ran it in for a touchdown. And I remember going back um, that Saturday. We watched film. And, uh, and then, as you used to call it, Black Monday. <laughs> I remember that Monday being – it was gloomy that day. And I still remember – hitting that sled. I told Coach Saunders that was like the worst football experience. Like, out of everything I did through my whole career, through the rest of high school, through college, through <laughs> through the NFL, that was the hardest day I ever been put through. You remember that day when you made us hit the sled? I, I mean, do. five perfect hits. And it wasn't like we was hit the sled and then it was like you hit the sled, you remember you, somebody would blow the whistle and then you had a bear crawl with it. You remember that? No, and I do. It, it, you were, and I remember we pushed, we had to hit it. And it wasn't like no quick whistle either. I mean, I remember we hit the sled and it was, then you blow the whistle and we was bear crawling, still pushing it. And we get up and you would look at us like, that ain't good enough. Back at one. And I remember you was like, I need five perfect hits on this sled. And I remember we was on the freshman field. Yeah, up top. Yeah. Up top. And we was pushing it from the back of the fence where the houses were. We was pushing all the way down to the parking lot. And you'd be like, and you tell the receiver and stuff, push it around. Turn it around. And we would have to push it all the way back. I remember we, I, I, I didn't hit them all because I remember I fell out. I was out. I was out. I think I was the first one to fall out. And you was, because, uh, I said I didn't hear the second whistle. And I remember I was trying to run back in. I remember Coach Pope out of nowhere just grabs the back of my shoulder. Back. Nah, nah, get out. Get somebody else in there. And like you said, I remember dudes crying. And, uh, I mean, it was it was definitely a day I'll never forget. And uh, I swear we had to hit it at least. It was definitely over 50. But we was, <laughs> we, it was an all-practice thing. 
You remember that? I, I, no, I, I remember because, so I'd have been probably three, four years out. So, I mean, I was still young, st- mm-hmm. you know, st- and, I, and I remember sitting there thinking, like, my God. <laughs> no, and it's like, dude, I won't say who, but I remember somebody bent over in the huddle crying, saying, I can't go anymore. I mean, it was... Guys were looking for a way out. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was it was Black Monday because it was at Monday practice. Everybody thought, oh, we're going to come in and get some scouting report. Yeah, no, oh, no, no, no. Well, I, I, I think a point needs to be made on that. Um, we were trying to get to where we thought we needed to be. I oh. mean, um, because there was a history prior to that of of, of things that, Kids that played before you uh, went through, you know, running either on the track or doing on the field, and what we went through as players. And we understood that, you know, that, and it comes back to the, and I've said this in a number of podcasts um, Red's attitude, you know, stick and stay, it'll pay, those who stay will be champions. And, and and we believe that. And to get your attention, you know, sometimes it gets to be quite painful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we can do that with a clear conscience because we all lived through that. Mm-hmm. We all did that, okay? And, you know, it's that old adage, you know, what's good for the goose. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that that was the mindset. I, and and I, I'm not saying that like it was wrong. I'm, if yeah, anything, I know, I, I that's a compliment too. I think, you know, you always want to push kids and people to to where you think they can get to, and like you yeah. never really know till you get to that point. Yeah. I mean, it, and and that's where, but that day definitely made that group better, and I think probably a lot of because all those guys contributed afterwards too. Yeah, you know, no, no, and I, had good years. No, I, I I say that story because I tell that story because. I feel like it made me it made you a better man. better player, and it made me, you know, when things got rough at West Virginia and we going through some drills, and I used to be like, "Shit, this ain't nothing." Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you guys wasn't you guys wasn't there that day I was there, <laughs> and so yeah, and and that's when you gave me the st- that's when you gave me the speech about you know you could be playing with the freshmen, yeah. and but you know I think you can help us here. That's when you gave me the speech that day. And I remember I went home, and you called my dad that day. and Because I didn't tell my parents about that day. I remember I was just sitting at the table, and you called my house that day to check to see if it was all right. And then uh, and then all I remember my dad was like saying, like, yeah, he'll be fine. He'll be down there on Monday. He'll be down there tomorrow. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so and, then, and then that week we played Campbell, who was 10-0. And, and, and let me say something, real. That schedule we had that year, was pretty rough because all those teams that we played that year were like Campbell. That was like their first year going to the No and the They went to the No that year. I thought we played them good. We should have won at the end, but they beat us. Um, and I remember you getting on the bus and you was giving compliments to every player, like, "Hey, you know, get a good job out there." And I think Brian, uh, I think Brian White was the running back because I think. Patton was hurt or something. But I remember you telling Brian Wright, hey, we found another running back. And, you know, you just went down the bus, up and down the bus, just giving compliments to the guys. Because, like I said, I mean, it was a tough loss. And then I think we go play Maslin. Mm-hmm. Now, I, hey, I thought, hey, now we, we went down there <laughs> and we played them tough. I felt like it was a game we let slip away. Um, we was winning, what, 14 nothing at halftime. Yeah. And, uh, I was telling Coach Saunders, I remember everybody was pumped up, everybody high-fiving. And I I still remember that one guy that was always trying to get me. I guess he felt like I took his spot. I I was going to give him a high-five. He just stood there with his arms arms crossed. Like, oh, okay. He didn't want to give me a high-five or nothing. And I just remember, I don't know why I remember that, but I remember him not giving me any dap or nothing. But, um, But, yeah, we played him tough. (laughs) <laughs> that was a, that was one of the harder losses I, because we had it. We just yeah. didn't close our hand. We didn't close it, and then uh, and then we had to play Poland that next week. And I figured I was like, oh, we starting to get it. 
I felt like I started to know the plays, mm -hmm. and then one of our favorite players quit on us. You remember that? You remember <laughs> one of our favorite old linemen, D linemen, quit on us. Give me the name. <laughs> Drew Jacobs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He quit on us. And I remember we went down on the field that before we practiced, you had us on a knee. And I don't want to say what you said, but basically it was on the line. You know, I bend over for some of you guys, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I ain't going to say what you said that yeah, day. And I remember. Probably best you did. <laughs> yeah. And I remember I wanted to laugh because I thought it was the funniest thing I heard in a while. But I was like, hell, I ain't trying to hit no sled no more. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, I uh, kept that in. But I remember I thought, I was like, man, we got it going. I was like, we're going to be masculine. And then we had to reshuffle the whole line. So I remember you guys moved me from guard. And I think I had to play right or left tackle that game. But anyway, I, I, I know I had to move to tackle. We went out there and played Poland. And that was another uh, dark day. I remember it being gloomy. Oh, that's when they were undefeated. That's when it was undefeated. Yeah, they had, it was a good football team. That was a great football team. I, I tell people all the time, like, hey, I think they could have beat any team in the state that year. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, they, one, uh, the one outside linebacker, I can't think of his name. He would play at Duke. Played at Duke, Duke, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And they had those. He, he, he passed away. Mike, yeah, uh, yeah, Mike, he did. Uh, Mike, I can't remember, but yeah, he was a very excellent player. Yeah, he had a brother that played yes. after him. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his brother played tight end, I think, went to Michigan State, I think. And, uh, and then they had the running back, Pete Perry. I mean, all those guys, they ran track, and they, they won the state track beat. Yeah. But, I mean, and they had the size up front. And I just remember just just getting manhandled. Like, I ain't never getting manhandled like that. Before. I mean, these guys were pushing us anywhere they wanted. Well, that I, was one out of seven years. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they beat us one time in seven years. Yeah, and I was thinking, I was like, we usually beat Poland. And it did not that year. And I remember. No, they was, that was. And I remember after the game, you came. I think it was like me, Fernando, or something. We were standing by each other. I remember you came up to us. He's like, you know how many total yards we got that game, guys? I was like, that one. What's that? <laughs> one total yard. I remember you coming to oh, us man. after the game. He's like, you remember how many total yards we got? I was like, no, nah, how many? He was like, one. <laughs> one total yard. I mean, they were good that year. I mean, they were, uh, like you said, they went on and won the state. They went undefeated. Won the state championship. And yeah, they were, they were definitely uh, a powerhouse that year. But then, uh, then after that, I think we went on to play I think the shared thing happened after that, and then because I remember I, I started to have to play both ways as a freshman, so I had to play defense because we lost a few players. We didn't didn't uh, we went to Hoban? Mm -hmm. That was that was like the last game of yeah. the year. That, they no, was, well, Rand was the last okay, game. Yeah, well, that was like a game before. I think we had to play Timken. That was the first year they was in the city series. So it would have been East probably. Mm -hmm. The East was gone. East was gone? Yeah, it was just Rand, Wilson, Tipkin, and us. Okay. okay. And we played Tipkin, and uh, I played both ways that game. We won that game, and then uh, – We yeah. played well at home. And yeah, we played yeah. well. Yeah. And we and had we a chance to win it. We had a chance yeah. to win it. Yeah. And, and that was – we didn't even have the all our players either. I mean, we was down a lot. I remember we even was playing – I remember Chris Alinka was a freshman. He was playing – Remember Emery, the running back, the red-headed kid? Yeah. I, you started – y'all put him in. I mean, we was putting in freshmen <laughs> left and right. <laughs> we was – as you as you say, we was looking for guys to play because um, we was we was injured and, and hurt so bad that year. And then, yeah, we did finish with Rand, which was a good note. And, and uh, We were very young. Okay. Yeah, that year, yeah. And, and I tell people – I was like, you know, at all the years at Cheney, I don't know. But to me, I felt like that was, I mean, skill position-wise, I mean, we, we had it. I mean, we had running backs, Patton, Drake, Tyrone, Brad, quarterback, balls at receiver one end. You had Tondi at the other. McCoy at, was catching pass. I mean, we had a lot of great uh, skilled players. It was just us up front wasn't able to – get it done for those guys. Hence the sled. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a, I mean, I mean, up and down the board, I mean, we had, hell, I remember we had guys, you know, 
I think McElroy was like a third string, fourth string running back at the time. I mean, I mean that's how deep we were, just and we couldn't open up the holes for those guys. But uh, but yeah, that that freshman year was definitely, I think, made me a better player though, just mentally. Um, I don't think physically yet I was at my peak, but mentally. Going into my sophomore year, I felt like, hey, I can, I know what's coming now. I know what to expect. I know, you know, hey, this is how I should warm up before the games. Um, just, just all those things. I thought was, and that was just a tribute to me playing my freshman year. Which, yeah, and I think we came out of the year expecting to be good for the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, would we have? Two or three ten win seasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, so ninety nine, four and six don't make the playoffs, mm-hmm. and at the end of the year it's just you know patchwork. Two thousand, which would have been your sophomore year, that was undefeated. Undefeated, right ten and zero. Mm-hmm. Junior year, uh, ten and two. Ten and two, and then senior year, eight, eight and uh, eight and three. And three, yeah. Um, and then, but yeah, I, yeah, but yeah, going into that sophomore year. And uh, oh, we talked about this the other year. I was like, man, only if we could have, only if we could have redshirted the skill players, so we would have had them my junior year, and had Brad and all that talent. Only if we was like in the same grade, we would have. It felt like we missed a year because I felt like if we would have had them my junior year, had that all that skill position, and we, we had some good skill players my junior year, but. Definitely not like when Brad was still here. We would have definitely made our run. But what were you playing? Were you playing tackle yourself? Yeah, yeah. You? I, was, I had to play tackle. So he was the other. He was playing left tackle. Um, Chris Linko, he was playing guard. Um, I think Joe Homer was our center, and uh, I think we. I don't. I forgot who was playing. That. It, was it like, might have been John Armini. Yeah, Armini was. I know there was a couple guys yeah, that that would. Yeah. You know. Buddy Rose, Sauce yeah. and, and, and John yep. Armini was the other guy. And, and so, we, yeah, we were still young. You know, we were still young, man. But I thought we did I thought we did just enough, just open enough. And like I said, we had, I felt like, the best skilled players uh, probably had ever just come through Cheney all at once. And we had Balls. I remember Balls making great catches. Tondi making – you know, making that one hand catch against Poland. Yeah. Oh hey, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know what I, mean? I, yes. hey, I was like, hey, if, if you once again, if you two was on and all that was back then, yeah. everybody would have knew about that catch. Um, uh, and then, you know, we had running backs. You know, you had Patton, you had Tyrone, you had Drake, you had, you know, Brad would run, Coy, you know, guys. I mean, just I mean, Fitch didn't have it to keep up with us. Canfield. Canfield was a close game, but I think Tony made a great catch in the end zone. Um, it, it was closer than what I thought it should have been, but we won that one. And then Boardman. And I always take Boardman as a measuring stick on how the season can go. I always felt like Boardman was always like, hey, you know, if you could beat Boardman, you're going to have a great season. If you're keeping close to him, Hey, you're going to have a great season. So I always thought like Borman was like, hey, because back then, I mean, Borman had had two guys to make it: John Greco, Steve Wallows. These mm-hmm, guys mm-hmm. made it to the NFL, played Division One. Um, their center, Kevin Tumalello, I mm-hmm. played against him in the Gator Bowl. He was playing at Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech right? yeah. yeah, yeah. And Mike Villagrana, the tight end, he played mm-hmm. with me. So and then you know they had Evan Beard back there. Mm-hmm. I mean. Borman had a lot of great players. Back then. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah so I always did. felt like in that year we we beat them soundly. We beat them. I thought that was Brad's. But like, hello, here's Brad Smith. I I always tell the story of uh, about um, the Poland game when um, we were in control of the game, but and I ran reverse to um, Joel Carnival. Joel Carnival. Yeah. yeah. Remember him? Jo- uh, jo- jo- was he? I don't know. Uh, would he? He might have been like, oh, he might have been your senior year, maybe Fernand. I don't know. Yeah, it was you, because 
Anyway, he fumbled. <laughs> it, 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 and it was just a, a, a stupid call. I, you know, I tried to – anyway, it was, it, was a, it was a bad call. And I remember coming out and, say, and apologizing to you guys, saying, hey, that's me. You know, I says, I, that, that's, just, that's just a bull crap call, that, 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 that bad, bad move. And, and you guys looked at me, and, and I remember all of you said, hey – Relax. Don't worry. We got this. Don't worry about it. And you, st- you guys shut him down. And, and uh, that might have been my dream year then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a dream. That was a, it. Was in the daytime, right? Yeah, it was. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was that was my junior year. Like 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 always, it was their homecoming, and yeah, we always yeah. ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I, now I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. But yeah, that sophomore year we ran through, and we handled Borman, and then. I mean, we was just running through teams that year, and uh, I just remember, like, I, I was thinking, I was like, oh, we're going to go to the no, we're going to go to the playoff, we're going to make it to state. I was like, this is it. <laughs> and so, so, we, so we running through those teams, and, and then uh, and we played Poland again, and they, they were still a good team that year. I think Pete Perry got suspended that game, so yes. he didn't play. He didn't play. He didn't play. I remember his little brother at the end of the game, he was all like, you guys suck. But we were we were down at halftime, weren't we? I don't think we was ever. I don't. No, I don't think so. I think we were just. They were just keeping it close. But I felt like we was always in. What control. year Dallas was that? Uh, that that was my junior year. We was down. When we were down and it was and like three two. We went psycho in the locker room, and and you guys came on the second half and uh, yeah, took that, control of the game. You know, what I think the, that would have been probably your your junior year because I remember. It, Eddie Molina having one of the best blocks on the goal. Oh line yeah, yeah, I I've ever that. seen. He took that dude all the way in the end zone. Yeah, and yeah. it was, and I think it was like the game winner, and it was yeah. a tight game, yeah. and it was just like yeah. seal the deal. Seal yeah. the deal. Yeah, but yeah, and, it, and but back to my sophomore year, I felt like we had it together, and then uh, yeah, so we run it through the team, and we played Poland, which I thought was like really our last hard hurdle to get through. That's when Tony made that great catch, mm-hmm. got it the first down. I think the next play, Brad drops a dime to balls, and he runs it in for a touchdown. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was like a big game. We win that game. Uh, we run through the city. Uh, and we played Lake. Didn't um, we, it wasn't, did we lose to Lake that year? No, we lost to – no, we won. We, won, that's, we went to the no. We played Niles in the playoffs. Oh, that was two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niles, and I remember Niles. I just remember just the atmosphere of it. I remember just being sold out. Uh, oh, well, it, I don't know if it was sold. I mean, it was a lot of people there, and I worked with a guy. Now he was like, "Yeah, I was at that game." And I was like, "Uh," he was. He's not even went to Cheney or Niles. He just went to the game, and I remember just. I remember the buildup for the game. Like every day, there was like an article in the newspaper, speed versus power, and I still got all those articles. I was looking at them the other day, actually. Speed versus power and Cheney Nile. There were supposed to, supposedly eleven, twelve thousand people there. I felt like I, it was more than that. I remember the game. I remember watching, you know, looking at at Stanball and just just the top two corners, right? I mean, that was yeah, that was it. You know, I mean, it, it was it was a fantastic the atmosphere, atmosphere was, yeah, it for felt, high school football. Yeah, it was. And uh, excuse me. And I remember playing in the game, and it came down to it, and you call that great play, the reverse pass, <laughs> catch it in the, in the crowd. I mean, I it was definitely like I can even hear hear the play, you know, because we didn't score the touchdown. We was down at the one. We still yeah. had to run it in. I remember it was. Like, definitely, I could even hear Brad, like, call the play in the huddle. And then, you know, we run the power, we get it in. The crowd's still going wild, going overtime. Of course, you know what happened. But I just remember I remember that um, the speech you gave after the game, it still sticks with me. And you said something on the lines like, if this is the worst thing that happened to you guys, you done lived a good life. And I still remember that speech. And, and uh, so – that's how that season ended, and then um, going into my junior year, which I thought personally was 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 not only my my best year, my breakout year. Uh, I took Coach Saunders. I said, man, I thought that was our best coaching year. Like just just putting things together and play calling and and us running. I need you to fool me. No, <laughs> well, 
You moved me to tight end. <laughs> yeah. Tight end. Yeah. But no, I was like, we put in the zone. That's the year we put oh, in yeah, the zone. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that that was, you guys truthfully were way ahead of the curve putting that zone. Because nobody was doing it. I, I, and and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, it was, it was the, 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 those guys, Dallas and Guy and, mm -hmm. and Pope, that, that convinced me. I mean, you know, I was old school, uh, and, you know, we met and met and met, and, and they, they sold me on it. Yeah, yeah, and nobody in it, you said you went to, you saw them do it in... No, we were we were get, we were preparing for the the playoff game, yeah. Steubenville and, and Niles, right? So Niles plays uh, Steubenville the year before, yeah. and we got that film. And Steubenville was running zone and just 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 gashing them. Because yeah. Steubenville was small up front, and yeah. and so you know that's when we kind of researched it and and threw it out to Ron, and and it was like, uh, you know, I mean, I guess we were in a situation like. How much better can you coach 34 than everybody else? Yeah. You know, so how can we be a little bit different with some of the guys we have? And, and uh, you know, it, we got a lot of miles, well, yeah. yards out of we it. We got a lot of miles. Well, got a double down, kick yeah. out, and lead through. Yeah. 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 But y'all put that zone in, and I felt like that was like a game changer for us. And at the time, we had a good old line my junior year. Yeah, but, we you did. Know, and, and Melina got big. Salih got bigger. I mean, everybody, Chris and Linka. And, and Joe Herman, mm -hmm. and I think y'all was switching in and out. Brian Heim, Fernando you know, Heim, Fernando. yeah, and and uh, yeah, I remember it took us a couple games to get it. I think it took us about right around the Camel game. Yeah, and, there was some growing pains. Yeah, there's no question. Yeah, but I thought that was like the best coaching uh, decision, probably uh, when I was there that we did just just running zone. Maybe that was due to we didn't have to hit the sled. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the sled ever went away. No, <laughs> no. It never went just away. not quite as much. No, not quite as much. But I remember we would practice zone, and I remember y'all would put whoever was on the sideline, it would be like 15, 20 guys on the other side. We used to do the sweep drill. And I remember Coach Guy even tell him we're running that way, and that's how we would practice learning the zone. The zone this was zone left. 36 and and also at the time we had a you know at McElroy once he got it down and learned the reads and made the right cuts yeah, yeah. he was the best running back I felt like in the state and, and, and we we put stretch in for Eddie McElroy mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. you know he got the you know he, John Cook was a, a kick out gash yeah. you know power yeah. and uh yeah, I mean Eddie, the nuances of of, of the stretch play, inside outside zone, uh, he, he I really really he was a great back and and uh, I think because of that. Yeah, and, and I was so goes on. I mean we we had that zone down. I remember later in the season we had that zone. Down. I remember the defense in him would just run. He would just run towards the sideline. I remember I would even have to touch him because he was so worried. They they used to be so worried about the play going and getting the corner. He would run, but you know, with the zone, that was like, hey, that's what we kind of want you to do: run, mm -hmm. run, and let Ed find a hole, which he did. But I mean, I I thought that was was like I said, it was ahead of time. Um, so I remember us. I, I remember that year. That's the year I went to. Um, and for me, that was like I said, it was my my breakout year and I remember I went to West Virginia that year went to the camp and I really showed out and I remember Coach Castile that's when he I remember I was sitting at the table and he offered me a scholarship to play um, football at West Virginia and I remember just my confidence going from here to up here and I remember we scrimmaged Lakeview and mm -hmm. we was whooping their butt up front. I remember we was doing a passing drill. And I was I was killing the kid up in front of me. I mean, we was killing I mean, me, Fernando. I think we was just doing like a half line type thing. Mm -hmm. And we was killing. I mean, we was whooping them up front so bad. I remember they tried to sneak in a couple of running plays on us. Because okay. we was doing pass drills. Because we practiced with them that whole day that day. 
And and then from there, my confidence grew. And then um, and I remember going to the Fitch game that year. And I remember uh, I got too hyped up in the pregame because we used to have. I ain't gonna lie, our pregame warm up was was long. We used to be out there. We we used to be out there for a while. Pregame warm up. Yeah, we wanted you to get a lot. Of sweat. Yeah, I remember. And I think I got too overhyped for it because I remember I had to come out the game for about uh, a couple quarters. Like I think I came out like the second quarter, and that was also the year. You know, Corey Stringer passed because of the heat stroke, oh, and so yeah. I was thinking in my head like, like I don't want to, you know, pass out or nothing. So I was like, and then when I was hot and I had like extra pads on because I was playing time, I thought I needed all this extra padding. <laughs> if you if, if you got the game up, if you see it, I have all this extra padding on, and I remember going out and you know, those guys hold it down. You know, they goo I think made a good play, strip sack. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, him and Fernando. The family yeah. Fernando, and then you know they was making plays, and and uh, a player I think that doesn't get enough credit of how great he was. I thought he was our best, probably one of our be- better players. One of our best players was DJ Frondrich at linebacker. Oh. Oh, yeah. I th- I thought he was the years I was there. I thought he was our best linebacker, and and that's taking nothing away from Drake or Chris and Linka. But, I mean, I remember y'all would put DJ at the nose. He'll get in there and make a quick play. I mean, that guy was everywhere. If, if you ever watched the game, I mean, he's on every tackle. And uh, I thought he was phenomenal. I don't know if I ever told him that, so if he's watching, <laughs> I thought you were a great – I thought you were our, our best – one of our best players on the team, DJ Fondrich. I mean, and he would play fullback and mm-hmm. catch the ball on the out. But I thought that defense, he made his uh, – he definitely was one of our, you know, you talk about guys being a Hall of Fame. DJ should be up in there if, if we put anybody he, in there. A great, great, great player. There's no question. And, and he was a good fullback too. Yeah, he was. He was. And then Sali, you you got it on the on the film. Makes one of the great blocks on the zone. Oh yeah. And springs Juan Serrano for the touchdown. Oh yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah. Sprung for the touchdown and. Then they came back and drove down, scored, um, made a two coin conversion, so now it's tied up. And we're going over time. I remember you coming out on the field. I remember the word, exact words you said, if we hold them here, we'll win this game. You guys hold them on defense, we'll win the game. And I was thinking in my head, I said, like, okay, we're going to, I was thinking in my head, like, yeah, we're going to stop them. And so, I remember the first play they ran, boom, stop them. Second play they ran, I got a tackle for loss, boom. Third play they ran, I think they caught like a little pass. Fourth play they ran, boom, me and Fernando get them for the sack. And then offense came out, the old classic uh, K up, 34 uh, dive, where I think it was like power. And he, I think he bounced it. He bounced it. And uh, what's his name? Mike De Niro, I think, had a great – he knocked mm. out like two guys. Yeah, yeah. He knocked out two guys. Mike De Niro came down, knocked out two guys. And Mac, yeah, think, made a great cut, bounced it, won the game. And I thought that was – that was like – I thought that was like a great, great win for – for the team and, and morale because I told Coach Hunt, it wasn't many people who thought we was going to be good that year. I remember I remember at Cheney, they even scheduled a play at the end of the season because you know, they didn't think we was going to make the playoffs. I mean, there was a lot of people thinking we was going to be good. Good, you know, as I told Coach Saunders when I talked to him, you know, fans just watch the football. They don't watch the old line right, you know, right, play. Right. So they don't know, you know, what goes on up front. But – I just remember, you know, we, we did we lost all that skill players and uh we had Juan Serrano who I thought also was a was a great player for us. Playing quarterback. We had Ed running back. I think we had Jaminette receiver and, and nothing from those guys. But they wasn't on the skill level as Tondi and Balls at receivers. We you know, we had so mainly our office was <laughs> uh sweet Sweet right with Ed, sweet left with Ed. Juan Sarando, get in there. 
mix it up a little bit. We throw him on. We used to we used to run um, quarterback follow. Yeah, quarterback follow. That's what it was. Juan Serrano. So so basically, it was on us up front to you know get it done, and I felt like that was a big momentum push for us. And then uh, we go on to play Canfield. That was another close game. And then, like I said, we go play Boardman. I always said, hey, that's the measuring stick of how good we were and how the season was going to go because they had a lot of great players that year. That's that's the year they had, you know, you know Evan Beard. And, and then I remember they had that receiver who they thought was as good as Anthony Floyd. Upgrove. Jay. Oh, yeah. Jay Upgrove. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jay, Jay. Yeah, Jay something. And, and uh, when they had Beard and running back, they had – Mike Villagrana, who, who played with me, who I thought was was a great tight end at at Boyd, man. Um Not because I played with him, but you know he made a lot of great catches, and they, they had a lot of great players, especially up front. Like I said, they uh, Greco and Tuminello and Volos, all those guys were Division One players. You know, two of them played in the NFL, so they were stacked that year. And I remember we was. And we was playing them hard up front. I remember they uh, Evan Beer. We was we was kicking his ass. Man, like, he ain't really have no long run or nothing. We was we was giving it to him, and um, it was a defensive struggle. I remember at halftime it was zero zero. Yeah, what was the final? It was like ten, 10 seven. seven. Yeah, yeah, ten seven. And and we scored. We came out of halftime, and we ran a reverse with with. Um, 33. What's his name? Joel. Joel. He ran the reverse. He got us down there. And then the zone. Oh, yeah. and then the zone finally popped off. And Matt runs it down to the one. We we get it in. We were up seven nothing. And um then I think they started to throw a little bit more because we was stuffing the yeah, run. I, who was the quarterback? That that was Tom Zitz. That was yeah, it. Zitz, oh, Zitz, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Who played at YSU? Who, yeah. Another scholarship player they had. And they started throwing a little bit more, and then um, and Ever Beer made a great play. He caught the ball. I remember he caught the swung out pass. I remember watching it. It was like a slow move. I remember watching it on because uh, I was on the field and it happened. I was on the other side. I remember why he caught the ball. He ran he ran a player over and ran it right in for a touchdown. Mm. So it was tied seven seven, um, going into the fourth quarter. Well, before that, we. I think I, before that, we I had a good sack, so it stopped them, and we pushed them back. And it was like fourth down and 20-something. Yes, go for yes. It. Yeah. And Mike Villacrana caught the ball at the one, and that back, because we was playing like a field position game the whole game, and he caught the ball at the one, and I thought that, that hurt us because when we punted the ball, because it was still 7-0, they got the ball like right back at the 40 or the 30 yard line. And so Beard caught that pass. But the play was Mike Villagrana catching the ball at the one. They got the ball back, and Andy Good, who also was a D1 scholarship, he went to West Virginia with me, kicks the ball, I think like 40 yards, to lose the game 10 7. But I remember you coming out, and, and the game was over. But you would call timeout, and you would come, and you came out and talked to us, like, "Hey, we're gonna be all right. You guys, are gonna be fine. We're gonna win a lot of games." And you was telling that, you was telling that to the defense when they had the ball. They was just taking a knee. Yeah. And you was like, "We're gonna be fine. We're gonna win a lot of games. You know, you guys just hang in there." And uh, yeah, I, I still remember that. And you gave that speech out there on the field. And we go play Campbell, in which I thought. Camel game. That's when we got that zone thing working, baby. We got that zone, and they had a couple great players. They had. I remember they had the big kid, big right, right, Walter Wright. Walter. Walter he was seven. I think it was his brother, big seventy-two guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Walter Wright played yeah. in ninety-seven. Seven, yeah, and then they had Harding, uh, a defensive end, who was actually that kid. He was. He went to a small school at West Virginia, but NFL scouts were looking at him because he came to our pro day. So oh, he turned, okay. yeah, yeah, he turned number three. He turned out to be a, a, a good player later on. But yeah, I remember they had those two big guys up front, 
and we got that zone thing working that game. And I remember it just, I remember, and McRoy got it, made a cut, and went. And I felt like, I felt like after that, floodgates open, and then uh, we beat them soundly. Uh, I think we shut them out actually.